Welcome back to Western Pennsylvania. I'm still working on uh, Suzuki Boulevard and this is the update of where I'm at. I uh, still have the idling issue with it. I take it out and run it. It runs great but then when you go to stop it's either revving real high or it's down almost quitting if you try to set it. There's something wrong. So one of the comments was a guy suggested is taking it, put it in a dealer's mode, which I have the dealer switch, put it on, you know, on as you ride to see if a code comes up because when you have this trouble, then you come home and you check it with the dealer switch, there's no code that comes up. And you have to watch using the dealer switch. It's just an on off switch like some guys will put a little jumper in there. If you put the jumper in there, then turn your bike on, it erases the codes. So you have to turn the bike on, then put the dealer code on, or switch on, and look for the code. It'll come up. It's right where the clock is, the dealer code will come up. So I said, that's a good idea. I have the dealer switch, so I hooked it up. I uh, wired it right next to the bike by my leg there and I put it on and then turned the key on so it'll get rid of any code I'll go ride it and see and as I ride I can look down and see took it up the road it was idling bad went out the road sure enough the code finally come up C40 I said ah now we're on to something so I get the book I look up the code here in the book <laughs> the climber book uh, let's see where are we at page 43 it goes C31, gas position signal, C32, real si rear cylinder fuel injector, C33, front cylinder fuel injector, C41, fuel pump relay. There's no 40. So now I got this code, and it's like, what? So back in here, you go a little further, and it has the where it tells all it everything that's wrong with that code what to do what to try C41 is here the fuel pump relay and I've checked it go back one page because that's C41 go back to the pa one page C33 or 32 and 33 fuel injector malfunction no C40. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So I rode it and come back. It was ha idling real fast. So I stopped it, adjusted it down a little bit, started it up, started adjusting it, got a low, uh, kind of low. I mean, it was so low it was gonna quit. But if you go higher, then it goes up real high. So I remember another commenter said, He's been riding his, and what he does is he lets it real low like it's going to quit, but he holds the throttle on a little bit. So I thought, I'm going to try that. Go out for another ride, and I could ride it, and every time you come up to a stop, it wants to go low. You have to keep that throttle on a little bit, and it is so touchy. Just a little bit, and it's going to go too high, so you're down. Plus, while you're riding, it's fine. Now, when you start downhill and you let your throttle off, same thing. It's going too low. And it's kind of, well, you have an engine braking system on this. It'll hold you back. So you deal with that. I mean, it's touchy, but you can do it. And I rode for a good while up and down, up and down the main road out here. Running great. Nice, but the th uh, idle. I'm like, man, oh, man, now I'm going to go through the rest of my book and see if I can find about a C40 because that's not I just got a chance to look there you know for a little bit uh, I'm still at it I'm still trying to figure it out man I wished I'd have bought this one of these bikes only the older ones with the carbs no fuel injectors and stuff wouldn't it be great to take this bike take the wiring off of it wire it yourself the hell with the uh, the brain in it all the sensors take them off and throw them out plug the holes and say to hell with that put a set of carbs on it and be done because <laughs> you can adjust them you can clean them and even if you get this fixed and you well you'll find out what it is 
what about if you go out on the road and this happens when you're way far from home? You're going to have to get this thing home. So it's like, is it dependable? And Suzuki and Yamahas are about the same. I don't know if any Yamahas have had this trouble. I've asked on YouTube if anybody knows or had this and took it to a dealer and they said this is what it is and told you they fixed it, tell me so I can try to narrow it in. But I tell you, it is going to drive me crazy. Then in the meantime, a guy up here has a big weed whacker. Asked me to look at it, he said the, the engine froze. Well, I said okay, so I looked at it, tore all one end part, one end of it where I could get at the piston, piston's free. Here it was in the other side in a pull start. Uh, Spring-loaded clutch in there, one of those pieces broke. So I brazed it up, it was good enough to run, but I ordered the part, a used part off of eBay for them, got it, went up and got it, brought it down, put it in. Then my cousin lives up here, her mower wouldn't start. So I went up, easiest fix I ever found. <laughs> Pulled the cap off the spark plug, cleaned it up, put it back together, put it back on, started right up. Bet she had a flat tire. It still had a little air in and she just lives right here and I said if you can break down here I'll pump it up. Looked at her tires, they're dry rotten. So I got her a set of tires off of eBay. I gotta put them on one of these evenings. Uh, then my mower was acting up, so I tore into that, took the deck off, went all over, straightened everything up, this and that. And it wouldn't run before. I got a, a new coil for it, put on, started right up, ran great. I've always had a little trouble with the idling on it. It would just surge very small. So I headed out here and I'm checking it, and I need to adjust the belt on it so that the deck will pull. It wants to slow down the deck and stop it. The belt's just a little bit too big, so I'm going to put a nylon on it where I can adjust it and get the right tension on that belt. But just before I was done with it, it started. While it was running, it's going up and down. Up. I said, here we go again. The same crap. <laughs> what is going on? Well, when I rode the bike, it was almost dark, and you know, the sun starts going down, it gets chilly here, and it was cold. I had my big coat and my helmet and that on, gloves, but I didn't really, you know, bundle up. I just had a t-shirt under this big heavy coat. I come in, I am froze. I had left the mower out, so I opened the garage, put the bike in, I get ready to put the mower in. I see Lois right up here in her office, and I hollered, hey, put the tee on, man, I'm froze. Tea kettle won't work. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? So I got to look at it. She said she'd put it in a microwave. Well, the microwave, it gets it hot, but it don't stay hot. You heat it in this, and it's, it's pretty neat. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so... Later, later we're talking and I said, you know what, maybe we ought to get a new mower. <laughs> get a new mower, get rid of that piece of junk. <laughs> 22 years old, I'm done with it. <laughs> then, <laughs> get this thing in the back, bring the old Harley out. No sensors, that thing is so simple to work on. Always runs and never lets me down. I ought to get it out and start riding it, you know. <laughs> I tell you what, this bike is unreal. Oh, I've had a lot of problems. I have fixed out, fixed up, worked with. I tell you what, man, this is crazy. This bike, and I've heard so many from so many guys that's had that trouble, and it's like nobody knows the answer. And you know, you take it to a dealer, what's going to happen? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a. We had to charge 130 or 40 dollars for labor, and you needed two fuel injectors. You know, well, that's uh, six million dollars and fifty cents. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like when you're in there. You're like, you're taking it to them. You don't have any idea what their number they're coming up with. Uh, come on, Trump, send me my money. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my money so I can get something fixed. 
Oh my goodness, oh, I tell you what. When she said that, oh, I couldn't even make a cup of tea. Oh, <laughs> that's broke. Oh man, I tell you. It's been one thing after another. <laughs> to tighten that belt, I come up with this idea. <laughs> I got a uh, thing I turned in a lathe, piece of aluminum, in fact I poured the aluminum and made it, put bearings in both sides, of course the bearings on the outside identical, okay the bearings are the same, I, this rod will go right through it, put the nuts on, uh uh, this uh, uh, bearing inside is a little smaller than the one on this side, I'm like oh my god here we go, so I turned the end up here like this and then threaded it so I could put that on top this on bottom and what I'm going to do is put it on a bracket big heavy bracket and come over and I'm going to drill right through the deck make sure the blades ain't going to hit the bolts inside put the bolts outward so just the heads there and then I'm going to have it on slots so I can push this against that belt and take up any play push it pull it back and forth and I'll have it so it comes clear off if I don't want it on but I need it on but that'll turn real easy and slick so that'll fix that but the engine then the neighbor that scraps he gave me some parts for this identical mower engine was the same and everything he took it and he was going to take the engine off because it was shot put a bigger engine on his so he gave me the old stuff off a lot of stuff off of it he gave me the carburetor I can't find the carburetor because I wanted to tear it apart first. That's what's nice about that. You can tear it apart and make sure because they say when it does that surgeon, it's usually the pilot jet in there, in the carburetor. So I want to do that. Plus, I had an old set of fuel injectors I took off my bike and I put these on that were used. But I have one of the fuel injectors there and I want to put power into it and then spray cleaner in and see if it'll go through and if I clean it. It's worth a shot because... But now that I know it's a C40, uh, this is a C50, but the code is C40. Oh, uh, I tell you. I, I just don't know. Beautiful bike, runs great. And it's just like and when it says about those uh, fuel injectors in there in that code it says about you don't have enough power going into the brain to tell it what the fuel injectors are doing but that's right before you know that ain't the C40 that's the uh, 32 and 33 so it might not be it so tonight I'll take this book in with me and just start going through and try to find a C40 maybe in there someplace else but it's not right in with the codes but that is what come up and when I got home I could see that C40 stayed on there a while I come back here put it in here shut it off just for the heck of it turned it back on no code so the guy that told me that to put the uh, dealer switch on as you ride and watch for a code hey thumbs up that was a good idea I never thought of it and it worked because I did find a code so another thing I'll get on YouTube and put in does somebody know about the C40 code maybe somebody knows about it but it's a start I mean I've been plowing through this thing I had to get away from it for a while just set set you know and think about it and do the mower do her mower do her then another thing, the neighbor over here, that tree come down, so I had to, you know, chop it up and that, and it just one thing after another. Man, when you're retired, I heard retired people say, I never knew I, how I got anything done. Because it's true. When you're retired, you're doing more than ever. You know, it's like, how did I do this when I was working? Man, oh man. Unbelievable. And Pennsylvania, this is uh, Monday. Yeah, Sunday, uh, yesterday at 8 p.m. in the evening, it went from uh, Tom Wolf, our governor, said everybody that goes in a store has to have a mask. Anybody that's in the store working has to have a mask. So we happened to go to John Eagle today, and all everybody had a mask. 
And just as uh, I, well, I went out before my wife and Lois come out and she told me, there was one woman come up there wanting to go in. She didn't have a mask. They said, no, you ain't allowed. You can't do it. So they, she turned around and left. Didn't have a mask. Couldn't get in. They wouldn't let her in. All the carts they bring back, they spray them down right away. They don't want you putting them back. They want you to leave them outside there, like, and then they take them and spray them down and everything. Disinfectant. Crazy times, crazy times, but it's not that big of a deal for us. I mean, the stores are, you know, some stuff's gone and this and that, but you can find it at other stores. We don't go shopping as much as we did. We went and we got a lot of canned goods, this and that, just set it out. But our Social Security, we both get Social Security. I get my pension. So our money's there. That's one good thing. And uh, so it isn't a whole lot of different for us. I mean, really, it's funny to go out and, man, there's hardly anybody on the roads and nothing going on like before. Makes it nice driving. <laughs> but, man, I hate to see this, and I really feel for the people that have to, you know, they need the money and can't go work. My God, who ever thought this was going to happen? Wow. Hey, I always say have a good day. Try to have a good day. Go, go try to make a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, man, not like that. Oh, my God. Try to have a nice day. A good day.